everybody good morning good afternoon good evening wherever it is you're watching us from welcome to mavuno online church it is our privilege our honor to be doing church with you today and i have some party people in the house with me and it's always a party when jesus is here so i want you to be ready get ready get your space make sure you are in full engagement mood to enjoy the presence of god and I just want to begin with a short prayer. Father God, thank you. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Lord God, have your way. Everything that you have for us today, we are saying our hearts, our minds, our lives are open to you, O oh God. So Lord, come, reign, take your rightful place in our hearts and in our lives today. All praise, all glory and honor belong to you. In Jesus' name, we begin in praise and worship and all God's people say, Amen. 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 I hope you're ready. This is going to be fun. Clap your hands like so. Put those hands together. I can see you. And move side to side. We declare all the glory, all the honor belongs to you, Jesus. Oh, oh. 
more time A little mashup going on here God is good and his mercies endure forever. You know, this God is a good shepherd. He's been a good shepherd to me. He's a good shepherd to the people here on stage. And I put it to you that he's also a good shepherd and wants to be a good shepherd to you. Scripture describes him this way in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Not just a general shepherd, but he's my shepherd and I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for His namesake. Now here's the part I struggle with. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, or some versions say the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I've always asked myself, why is it that if He's leading me, why am I walking through the valley of the shadow of death? Why do we have to go that way? And the answer is in the previous verse. In verse 3, he says, He guides me along right paths for His namesake. So some of you might be going through a painful situation or a trying situation and you're wondering, God, why am I going through this? It's because there's glory in it. God wants to use your story to bring Him glory and to make sure you go through your ultimate good. Our God is a good shepherd. Would you join us in celebrating this God who is a good shepherd? Lord, we thank you that you love us and you care for you as your sheep of your hand. Lord, you are the shepherd. You are the shepherd. I sing that together, the Lord is. Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Say defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Say filled with a Overflowing, my cups overflowing. Mm. See, no weapon can harm, weapon can harm me. Oh, so I won't fear. I won't fear. Mm. Wherever you are, just raise your voice and sing. together say he always guides he always guides me mm. through mountains and valleys mountains and valleys oh, oh, oh. joy is refreshing joy is refreshing oh, it restores my
thank you that you are a good shepherd that Lord you never leave us you never forsake us your love is from everlasting to everlasting your mercies are new each and every morning this day that we have come to means that Lord God you have blessed us with fresh grace for today and Lord there's somebody here today who's watching who's in need of your comfort who's in need of your care who's in need of you to show yourself strong as their shepherd in their situation. Lord God, with your shepherd's rod and staff, I invite you by the power of your Holy Spirit to guide our Mavuno online community. That Lord God, we have needs, many unspoken. Lord, you are the good shepherd. You care for your sheep. In fact, you showed this, you demonstrated this by laying down your life for us. That God, you gave your very best. So Lord, we can trust you. You are a faithful God. So Lord, our response today is to put our trust in you. And that Lord, be that balm of Gilead. Heal our hearts where there are pains, where there are hurts, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would heal in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you're concerned even with the minute details of our lives you care about everything we love that we can relate with you Lord we give you glory we give you honor we praise and worship you in Jesus mighty name and all God's people said amen, amen. Mavuno we love you and God loves you amen Good evening from wherever you are following us from. Um, we are so excited to have you here. I answer to the name Milton Jumba, Jumba like a big house. I'm one of the pastors here in Mavuno Church. I'm so honored to bring God's word to you today. And let me begin by actually just thanking our senior pastor, Pastor Moravian, Pastor Karo Wanjao, for the privilege that they've given me to share God's word this month in this series that we have dubbed Life on Mission. In this series, we are saying, guys, that every coach, teacher, or mentor does set up practices that the student, the apprentice, the learner, the follower, whatever you call him, to adapt certain attributes, attitudes, mindsets, and skills that would help them to effectively and productively achieve the best version of themselves as they optimize their capacity. Allow me to say this to you guys, that God... Jesus Christ, as a model, a teacher, a coach, and a mentor, has set up practices and regimes that should help us as his learners or followers to become better versions of who God intended us to be. There are many practices or regimes that we can talk about, but this month, we will focus on only four of them. And while at it, we'll not just focus at their exercise, but we will look mainly at what they make us become as we engage in these exercises. In week one, we looked at prayer and the muscle that it should help us build, faith. Last week, we looked at sharing God's word, preaching, and the muscles that it builds in us, obedience and its fruit, righteousness, making us walk in right standing with God as we obey his word. So today, I want us to look at the practice of taking care of God's people. This thing that we call pastoring, or what some people call shepherding, and the fruit that it should cultivate in you and in me, which is love. And I have titled my sermon today, My Brother's Keeper. As we start this conversation, allow me to ask you a question. What are other names that the Bible is called? 
What are other names that the Bible is called? It could be even your mother tongue. It could be in whatever. Just write them down in the chat box. Let us see what you know about this book. In my mother tongue, it's called Evangeli. So what's our Evangeli? Yeah, that is Greek of evangelism, a book of evangelism. Some people call it the book. Others, the Holy Writ, others, scriptures, others, testament, others, covenant, and others call it the good book. But one of my friends, oh, God bless him, uh, calls it the book of good farming, meaning that it is written to guide and uh, allow us to create an environment where human beings as a seed of God can be planted, nurtured to maturity, and bear the fruit that God intended. And I find it interesting that there are so many interesting farming analogies found in the Bible. For example, the Bible calls us trees, as in you are a tree. In Kenya, some people would make fun of tingisha miti. They, they would know what that means. Um, our ox of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. In some places, the Bible refers to human beings as wheat and tares. In fact, sheep and goats, where God is the shepherd. Um, in some places, God says that uh, in Christ Jesus, he's the vine and we are the branches. And God is the vine dresser, the farmer. Um, in this place of the shepherd, I find a very interesting thing. When you look at, for example, Psalm 100 and verse 3, it declares, know the Lord, that he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Somewhere else, God says, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Elsewhere, David proclaims, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant. So speaking to God as the shepherd, for I do not forget your commandments. Elsewhere, the psalmist declares, then he led his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a, fl a flock. So one of the things that as I look at this uh, that cannot escape my heart, my mind, is how these scriptures do elucidate the relationship of love, of care, protection, and provision that God has with us. But the best for me of them all is found in Psalm 23, the psalm that is a psalm of David. And this is what it declares. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is said that love does. From this scripture, we can learn many things about God that demonstrates his love towards us when he operates as a shepherd. But allow me to just point out six of them from this scripture. And as we break these things down, remember that Jesus calls himself the great shepherd. And the same Jesus has invited you and I to imitate him so that we are conformed into his image. So whatever we pick out of this are the things that God is asking you and I to actually take and make it part of who you are. Such that this shepherding heart will build in you and build in me a loving heart. Therefore, allow your heart to be molded into this shepherd's heart, the heart that loves and does, as we ruminate on this word. Number one, I said I'll give you six things. A shepherd feeds. What that means is love feeds. A shepherd exposes his sheep to places where there is food. He rises up very early to prepare and provide for his sheep. He sacrifices time, energy, and resources to ensure that the sheep are provided for. 
What would I challenge you to do? I'm joining the 4.30 a.m. prayer every day uh, in your campus. Or if you do not belong to Mavuno, uh, in our website, you will find guidance as to how you can get the link to join this prayer. Feed your sheep through impartation. For us as believers, on the other hand, we are fed every week with God's word. We listen to sermons, we sing songs, we watch videos, we read God's word, we follow teachings in family night or in our discipleship groups, and we share with one another, with our accountability partners, and so many other things we do. We are well fed, good people. It is this food that we have received that we are asking you that if you imitate God's way, you can share it with those around you. And even them, they will be fed too. The second thing we would say about a shepherd and love is that a shepherd refreshes the sheep. Love refreshes. You see, this is the place of restoring calmness restfulness and assurance to those around us, especially those who are in distress, in fear and in worry. Ours is to create a safe environment of peace and belonging that those around us will feel free to approach, will feel free to share the burdens and lighten their load. Encourage these people, build them up, bring them into the prayer meetings where they will find a fountain to drink upon. Let them attend family night. Invite them into your discipleship groups and even the services that we have on Sunday for refreshing. Allow me to challenge us good people. Help people solve their personal problems. It could be in providing godly counsel. It could be to mediate peace between siblings or spouses who are in disagreement. In some occasions, it could just be supporting one another through a financial challenge like working with someone in accountability so that they can get out of debt. Love does, guys. Number three, a shepherd guides. Love guides. You see, there are many people who are living harassed lives, like sheep without a shepherd, and are constantly being exposed to the enemy, who has had a very easy hunt with them. Our role, your role, is actually to bring them back to the fold. We need to guide them to make the right choices so that they get into right standing with God, rather than being moral policemen. Let's teach them. Let's pass on to them what we have learned. Let's advise and pray for the stuck. Listen keenly and point people to the direction that could help them out. Let's encourage the discouraged. Let's ask and expect God to give us a word for these people. Let's share the gospel freely, especially, especially more so with those who do not look the part in the eyes of others. Why? Because the one who's forgiven much loves greater and is more passionate for the things of God when they encounter his love and are turned around. The fourth thing I could say about a shepherd and about love is that a shepherd comforts. Love comforts. A shepherd's rod symbolizes authority. You see, we need to realize, good people, that at some point we will judge angels. But on this side of eternity, we need to call out, rebuke, correct people so that they do not live in fear, guilt, or anxiety. But with the staff, we need to lovingly comfort them. We need to care for them. We need to season our words with salt. Rebuke without love has an amazing potency to create modern day legalists and Pharisees out of us. The fifth thing that a shepherd does is a shepherd protects. Love protects. The shepherd prepares a table before our enemy. You see, in our midst are many broken people, people who are challenged by addictions, by pain, by illness, by job loss, by bondages, and many other issues. In their state, they need to feel covered, they need to feel assured, they need to feel taken care of, that they are not left vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. That is in the journey of recovery, they will find safety, security, confidence in us that though they are still in a sticky place, their feet are firmly on solid ground in Christ Jesus through his people, you and I. Lastly is a shepherd releases. Love releases. You see guys, anointing the head with oil means that the shepherd equips, empowers, and adds value to those around them. 
This leads to their growth, to their maturity, to their blessing and walking in their own authority. We need to equip God's people, give them room to express their gifts and put an expectation on them that they can become whatever God would like them to become. Make the people around you believe in themselves. Make them believe in the purposes of God over their lives. Challenge their uncommitted and engage the reluctant. People may just need to know what they need to do to engage in life. And sometimes they just need someone to point them in the way that they should go. Inside a reluctant leader could be a Moses. Inside a reluctant leader could be a Jeremiah who disqualifies themselves for one reason or the other. My prayer for you, Mavuno, is that God would make you understand that each person around you, every one of them, has the capacity to be in God's image and in God's likeness. And that you have the key to open the door that will make them walk into that way. But allow me to suggest to us that there are some things that can make you miss out on growing this heart of God as a shepherd, a heart that loves and does, a heart that makes one their brother's or sister's keeper. The first thing that could actually be a distraction is fear or rejection or failure. You see, this is mainly because of how we have probably labeled our temperament, maybe how we've looked at ourselves at our age and feel that we, are, we will fail, we would be rejected because of how we look, maybe because of our past mistakes, we may be feeling unworthy. Another thing that would make us not engage is self-preservation. Maybe you are the kind who tell yourself that you do not involve in other people's business and therefore they should not poke their nose in yours either. That would make you not develop this heart. Another thing that could be a preventer, a barrier, is not understanding the times. You see, COVID changed the way things work. Community which had earlier been broken by individualism, by modernization, by materialism, has been injured even further. And people are more alone and lonely than before. And this makes people need one another, guys. So we need to understand the times so that we can engage in community. The other thing is mistrust. The feeling of being abused or being misused as you offer yourself or maybe you offered yourself and someone took advantage of you or you offered yourself and then someone did something that gave you offense when you helped them out and it backfired on you. This can make you not engage in the shepherd's heart. And finally, distraction where you may feel that there is too much on your plate already. There are children to take care of. There are work deadlines to meet. There are things that you have to actually fulfill in your family and that there is no room for any little other thing. And you may feel, no, I can't, I don't have even anything else to give. Allow me to say, guys, we may miss out on something so big because this thing, love, would live eternally. Learning how to carry a shepherd's heart, the heart that trains us how to love regardless, is very crucial for a believer. The practice of being a shepherd builds a heart that loves. We were created for community, good people. God placed us in families to live in community. This is where we are nurtured for growth and for maturity. It is where the sick and the vulnerable receive loving care. Under this shelter, people find security and confidence and hope for tomorrow. God's nature as a father, as a provider, a teacher and a guide, a disciplinarian and a caregiver is what he calls us to come and emulate. And it is in that space that people will find love and places of rest. Allow me to say, guys, that when we engage the shepherding heart, we find ourselves extending the love of God unto them. Furthermore, the fruit of the Spirit is only expressed among people. It is expressed in relationships. The fruit of the Spirit is not for those uh, things of, that, that we feel or we find that we walk in power. No, no, no. The fruit of the Spirit is expressed inside relationships. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control can only be expressed among others. And if you look carefully, good people, they seem to connote 
the presence of the opposite for it to be evident. You cannot just say that I'm a patient person. No, a situation must be there to show that actually you have patience. You cannot say that you are kind until that kindness is tested. You cannot say that you are good until that goodness is tested. You cannot say that you have self-control until you are ex exposed to a place that you need to manifest control. That's why this thing is important, guys, to learn the shepherd's heart. Because it is with it that you will learn to walk in the divine. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. And Jesus says that we shall be known to be his disciples if we love one another. So what do I want you to do this week? If you're not in a discipleship group, please join one. If you're not in a discipleship group, please join one. If you are a, a regular Mavunite and you go to a particular campus, I want you to give a shout to your campus pastor or one of the leaders there uh, and just tell them you're not in a discipleship group and you'd like to join one. If you're following us online and you'd want to be in a group, uh, kindly DM us. Uh, send us a message in our Facebook page. Uh, send us uh, a message uh, through our website. Contact us and tell us that you would want to join a discipleship group and we will put you in one. We had asked you to write down three names of people that you committed to pray for. If you're joining us for the first time, don't feel left out. Write down the names of three people who do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Seek to build a relationship with them. This week, take them out for a walk. Take them out for lunch. Take them out for coffee. If they're not very far from you uh, in your relationship curve, invite them to your home. Just listen to their stories. Let them to receive love and kindness from you. And when you meet them, pray for them. Pray that they will be fruitful in their life. Pray that they'll be fruitful in their family. If they're married, pray that they'll be fruitful in their marriage, in their job, in their business, in their investments, in their education. And as you do this, you will demonstrate the love of God that will be shed abroad from us to them through the power of the Holy Spirit of promise. And you will be showing that indeed you are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Allow me to pray. I want to pray for three people. The first person I'd like to pray for is you've not experienced this love of God. And you're saying that I want to experience that love. I want to go back to this God, to be in relationship with Him, to make Him my Father, and to love Him and receive His love. The second person I would want to pray for is the one who's lonely, the one who's hurt, the one who's been in a place of difficult relationships. Maybe in your marriage, maybe this week you are left, maybe this week a relationship that you had a lot of hope in just got broken. Maybe you're going through a divorce or a separation. I want to pray with you. And lastly, I will pray with us that we will be able to walk in this heart that loves. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to pray for those ones who are saying they do not have this relationship of love with you. They've not experienced you as a shepherd. They've not even come into the gates that Jesus says, I am the gate. Father, as they enter from wherever they are, Father, would you receive them? Would you shepherd them? Would you bring them into places of rest? And would you allow them, Lord God, abide in the fold? Father, would you take care of them? Would you minister your goodness, your love, your kindness, and your mercy unto them? Would you forgive them of their sin? Would you cleanse them of their unrighteousness? Father, would you put down every weight of guilt, of shame, every weight of reproach that may be upon them? And Lord God, I pray, that you would take away every burden from their hearts. My Father and my God, I pray that you'll fill them with your Holy Spirit of promise, that these ones will never feel alone, O oh God, but they will find that they are always with you 
because you love them and you care for them. So you who's able to keep them from falling, would you watch over them? Father, I pray for those who are lonely, for those who are in a broken relationship, for those who are probably going through a divorce, a separation, a difficult moment. Father, I just want to pray first and foremost for them that Lord God, the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will come and envelop them, Lord God, and guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, I pray for those ones who are wounded, for those ones who are in pain, for those ones who, are, Lord God, have been through a very traumatic space. Father, would you heal their hearts? Would you pour your balm upon their hearts? Would you bring healing upon them, O oh God? Father, I pray for the ones whose wounds have taken long that you would send your angels assigned to them to press out, Lord God, those wounds that, Lord God, they'll no longer be toxic and you'll pour upon them your balm for healing, oh God. For those ones who arrows of bitterness, arrows, Lord God, of anger, arrows of resentment are upon them, Lord God, by faith we approach them out in the name of Jesus that these arrows will no longer hurt them. Father, may the angels Angels assigned to them, oh God, minister to them by pulling out every dart of the enemy, every arrow of the enemy, and may you make them, Lord God, to go through a path of healing, oh Lord. Father, for those whose trust has been taken, Father, would you restore trust? For those whose faith has been shaken, would you restore faith? For those, Lord God, who've been broken, Lord God, would you build them up again? And would you lead them in the way that they should go? And Father God, for all of us, would you minister our hearts and allow our hearts to learn how to love, loving regardless, loving without a reason. That Lord God, we do not need a reason to love, but any which way we will comfort, we will protect, we will feed, we will Lord God build up your people. We will protect them and release them, Lord God, even as we equip them to become the fullness of your purposes for their lives. Father, would you teach us how to forbear one another and how to walk in the authentic love that would make us walk in the nature that is divine. For God, you are love. We thank you and we bless you for these things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit and God's people say Amen.